Everybody, greetings on this Thursday the 3rd. So glad as always to have you with us. I heard a clap of thunder here at the newsroom. The showers, though, a little farther out, but some folks did get on a few light showers and a few light storms today. We'll talk about the likelihood of some more in just a few moments when we get to your weather forecast for your holiday weekend, which is gearing up and getting closer all the time. Tonight's headlines will include a man arrested on 4th offense DUI in Sagersville after a motorcycle accident earlier today. And for all of you golfers, business owners and or supporters of our Senior Citizen Center. I've got a story just for you tonight. I'll introduce to you Miss Teen and Miss McGoffin County candidates and we'll have some other headlines as well and possibly a few follow-ups from yesterday. I'm still leaving a window so to speak for some more information and a follow-up on the report that I aired last night about the ruling handed down by the Kentucky Court of Appeals. With all of that said, we'll start off with a headline that is starting off a great many newscasts, not just across Kentucky, but across our nation. We will refer to it briefly tonight that Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis was jailed on contempt charges earlier this afternoon after she refused to obey orders handed down by District Judge David Bunning, following which all but one of her deputy clerks, five out of the six, that one clerk being her son, said that they would issue marriage licenses regardless of her thoughts, wishes, and her being placed into jail as far as the contempt charges is concerned. However, even following that, attorneys were actually proposing that Davis would be released because she had the authority and had to allow those deputy clerks to allow marriage licenses in her office. When she was brought back into the courtroom, it's my understanding she refused to do so and was jailed once again. And therefore, it appears as though no licenses are to be issued at this time in the Round County Clerk's Office. A McGoffa County man was arrested on fourth offense, DUI, and other serious charges with aggravated circumstances as well following a call that a motorcycle accident had happened near College Heights and Route 7 in Sagersville. The Sagersville Fire Department was initially called to that accident in that area. After some investigating, they found the motorcycle and the alleged victim or rider on Elam Street in College Heights. After being questioned by Sagersville Police Chief Matthew Watson, Clarence Wayne Gibson reportedly failed field sobriety tests on scene. He was given the eye test, which he couldn't see the finger of the officer, according to Watson. And Watson also said that he was too unsteady on his feet to attempt to do other field sobriety tests. After being told that Gibson was going to jail, he started to initiate some chest pains, he said, or experienced some chest pains, and then was taken by ambulance to the Paul B. Hall Medical Center, where he there refused the officer's medical test or blood or alcohol content at that time, drug or alcohol content in his blood at that time. He was cited, however, with driving under the influence, fourth offense, driving on a DUI suspended license, first offense, with aggravating circumstances, no insurance, failure to register or transfer the vehicle he was riding, uh, no license tag, and no receipt. He was still in the hospital for possibly other medical conditions at the time of this report, about 4 o'clock this afternoon. I also left some space available today in hopes that we would have some more information to relay on the subject of the ruling issued by the Kentucky Court of Appeals for the election case here in McGoffin County. We learned yesterday from attorneys representing Dr. Charles Harden that he has 30 days to file an appeal with the Kentucky Supreme Court after this week's verdict. Rules read, any party to this appeal has a right to file a motion within 30 days asking the Supreme Court to review the lower court's decisions. That is the decisions of the Court of Appeals as well as the special judge of the McGoffin Circuit Court. The other parties would then have a right to file a response to whatever is filed by one of the parties asking the Supreme Court to take review. Now, the Supreme Court doesn't take all the cases that it's asked to, but if they do take this case and someone asks for them to take it, then briefs would be filed, and it's likely that an oral argument would be held in Frankfurt probably sometime in 2016. In any event, uh, at this point, Judge Harden remains the McGoffin County Judge Executive and will remain so throughout this process. Can you tell me at this time if he is so inclined to go ahead with that procedure and file the motion before the Supreme Court, or is that a decision that's been made? If the decision hasn't been made yet. We have 30 days from the entry of any orders at the Court of Appeals to make the 
And, of course, all of this after the Kentucky Court of Appeals denied all requests for and petitions for a rehearing filed on behalf of Judge Harden and the Magoffa County Board of Elections. We did, as I said yesterday, reach out to John Montgomery. We have not heard back from him as of yet. We hope to have some information or a statement from he or his attorneys sometime soon. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Anonymous with helping so many people across the Commonwealth and specifically here in our area as well, United Way and the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center. The United Way has an annual fundraiser coming up and the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center depends largely on that donation that comes from that fundraiser and they are depending largely as well on some help from some golfers and members of the community to help make sure it's a success for them. I dropped in to talk to Senior Director Marlene Howard about the upcoming United Way Golf Scramble. Now, the activity for the day had just cleared out for the afternoon, but more often than not, it's a pretty bustling place. Even if the Senior Citizen Center had the more and much needed space that it would take to expand, it would still be a busy and hopping place. Currently, they are serving 49 Meals on Wheels daily, and there's another 20 to 30 seniors who come into the center and eat each day. It's 70 to 80 meals prepared, and most of them delivered each and every day. Then there's the year-round activities, too many to list, but Rook, Reading, Bingo, the Quilters, all sorts of other physical and mental activities and a whole lot of other things they do year-round. And all of that takes funding. And one of their biggest supporters is the United Way, who is this year having only one major fundraiser. And for that, the Senior Citizen Center, says Director Marlene Howard, needs some support of a lot of golfers and maybe some businesses and individuals as well. We get a grant that helps us with our Meals on Wheels program. Uh, there's three agencies in McGoffin County that gets a grant from United Way. It's a uh, the Senior Citizen Center, the Rescue Squad, and the Kentucky Bible Commission. What, how much does that grant usually average a year, and how, and how much help does it bring? For us, it's 3500 That's a big deal when it comes to the, because we're spending like $40,000 a year on raw food. And another big deal is that the United Way usually does two annual fundraisers, two major fundraisers, a horse show and this golf scramble. They've lost money on the horse show for the past couple of years, so they've scratched it. Now they're going solely with the golf scramble. And depending on how much the Senior Citizen Center helps with that golf scramble is a factor on how much grant money they get. That's why she needs help from a lot of golfers and businesses. So we need teams and we need people to sponsor the holes. Uh, they do sponsorship of each golf hole. I think there's 18 holes. So that's what we're looking for. It's $300 to sponsor a hole or it's $300 to do a team. They can do either or they can do both. Uh, the golf tournament is October the 12th at the Paintsville Golf Course. We have the applications here. Uh, I'm sure the rescue squad in the Kentucky Bible Mission has the applications there, or they can go online to United Way of Eastern Kentucky Facebook page and click on their link and apply there. And a little word of advice, as I learned not so the hard way, but the longer way today, if you go to their Facebook page for the United Way Golf Scramble, it's not spelled out United Way, it's UW of Eastern Kentucky. Takes you right there. Just a little shorter and a little faster because if you look for a United Way spelled out, you're probably not going to find it and have to call someone for help. And you can always stop by the Senior Citizen Center. They've got applications there, as Marlene said, or you can give her a call if you have any questions or would like to help sponsor. 349-5152 is the number to your McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center. Let's go on over to tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau-sponsored community calendar. And with it, just a few quick reminders. No picking and grinning this Saturday at Kearney Free Will Baptist Church. They say have a... Happy Heritage and Labor Day weekend, and they'll see you back there soon.
The first annual horse show sponsored by the Middle Fork Fire Department is happening in Morgan County down in West Liberty at their horse park this Saturday, the 5th, at 6 p.m. A whole lot of classes, a whole lot of paybacks, a whole lot of concessions, and a whole lot of good fun with a whole lot of good support for a good cause. The Middle Fork Fire Department. If you have any questions, call 349-3835. Next Tuesday, I won't see you on Monday, so next Tuesday at 1 o'clock is the first of six Weekly sessions, workshops are two and a half hours apiece, and they cover everything from managing pain to increasing your fitness, managing your medications, and so much more. These are free, and they're about living healthy at the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center. The first one is next Tuesday at 1 o'clock, and the next blood drive for McGoffin County has been set for next Wednesday, 1230 to 5. The Kentucky Blood Center Blood Mobile will be behind the Saggersville Subway there at the medical building. And we'll be here each and every weekday. 6 and 11 on Howard's Cable Channel 7, Foothills Channel 40, and then, of course, on yournewstoday.com the following day for your calendar announcements. They're always free, and you can get them to us any way you like. We'll tell everyone about them. Birthdays and anniversaries, too. Turning to funeral service announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. We have a listing tonight of services to be held in honor of 61-year-old Mary Sue Hunley Anderson of Sagersville who passed away on today's date, survived by her daughter, Candy Reed, brother Gary Hunley, sisters Ruth Ann Miller, Rita Harmon, Wanda Witt, and Sharon K. Phillips. Funeral services have been set in her honor for this Sunday at 2 o'clock at the McGoffin County Funeral Home, and burial will follow services at the Hunley Cemetery on Mine Fork. As for visitation, it begins tomorrow evening after 5, and will continue all day Saturday, and then up until services Sunday at 2. Once again, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Heritage Days in McGoffin County officially kicked off last night, and there's going to be a whole lot of things to see and do. Get out and take in as much of it as you can. A whole lot of baby contests, contests tonight for the Little Miss and Little Master and those age groups. And then, of course, the Miss Teen pageant begins tonight at 8. And right now we'll take a few moments to introduce to you, as we always do before the big pageant itself, our candidates who are vying for the title of both Miss Teen and Miss McGoffin County. The eight lovely young ladies competing for the title and crown of Miss Teen McGoffin will be doing so to the theme of putting on the hits. In addition to the contestants, there will be entertainers, and the Harold Whitaker Middle School dance team will be dancing through the decades as well. Contestants are number one, Allie Russell. Contestant number two is Tyria Fletcher. Whitney Fletcher is contestant number three. Contestant number four is Brittany Collins. Contestant number five is Jonah Morrison. Contestant number six is Lakin Howard. Ella Via Gibson is contestant number seven, and Alex Talby is contestant number eight for the Miss Teen competition, which starts at eight tonight. And now for tomorrow night's contestants for Miss McGoffin County, the pageant set to begin at 8.30. Contestant number one is Miss Cassie Robinson. She's a 22-year-old daughter of Tim and Blanche Robinson of Lovely, Kentucky. Cassie is pursuing a Master's of Business Administration at the Coleman College of Business on the University of Pikeville campus. Her platform issue is Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and for her talent, Cassie is going to perform a lyrical dance to I Can Only Imagine. The second contestant is Shelby Basham, the 17-year-old daughter of David and Kim Basham of Sagersville. She's a senior at the McGoffin County High School, and she says she plans to attend Moorhead State University to become an art teacher. Her platform issue is Love and Blood, Be a Blood Donor. For her talent, she's going to perform a dance routine to try. Contestant number three is Miss Whitney Jenkins, a senior at the McGoffin County High School and the 17-year-old daughter of Scott and Leah Jenkins of Sagersville. She says that after high school, she plans on attending Moorhead State University and becoming a mental health therapist. Her platform issue is Stop Human Trafficking, Slavery Still Exists. And for Whitney's talent, she's going to sing I'd Rather Be Blind. 
Alyssa Watkins is contestant number four. Alyssa is the 17-year-old daughter of Scotty Arnett and Angela Arnett of Sagersville. She's a senior at the Magoffa County High School with plans on attending Marshall University to become a pharmacist. Her platform issue is Listen With Your Heart, Awareness for the Deaf. And for her talent, she will present a dance routine to Walk This Way. And contestant number five is the 22-year-old daughter of Tom and Robin Smith of Prestonsburg, Kentucky, Kathleen Smith, a student at the University of Kentucky. She is majoring in mining engineering, and her platform issue is Alzheimer's awareness, prevention, treatment, and finding a cure. And for Kathleen's talent, she's going to sing Heaven, Heartache, and the Power of Love. And these five lovely and talented contestants will be joined by the reigning Miss McGoffin County tomorrow night. The pageant will have a theme of the Variety Show, and the McGoffin County High School dance team under the direction of Andrea Preston will be on hand to dance through the decades, and they've got a dynamite lineup of entertainers who will be performing throughout the evening. The winner will advance to the Miss Kentucky Scholarship pageant to be held in July in Lexington, that is next year. She will receive a $500 scholarship, crown, trophy, flowers, and an official Miss American local crown. Runners-up also receive scholarships, trophies, and flowers. In her 25th year as director of the pageant, Jensie Bailey welcomes everyone to attend. Like I said, a whole lot to see and do and eat. You can still smell it every time you drive through the downtown area. Uh, we have seen some showers and a few light storms to the north of Salyersville, some parts of McGoffin County, some parts of Johnson County seeing some, and they're kind of just sitting there for the most part. Not, not big, massive storms, but they're putting down a little bit of light rain and a few claps of thunder and lightning possibly with it. We will see, I think, the chance of those isolated showers continuing tonight, uh, winding down finally. Also, as you'll see, we'll see some fog later on tonight, partly cloudy skies. And that fog will start us off on our Friday. Those isolated showers and thunderstorms are possible to the tune of 20%, mainly after 2 o'clock tomorrow, otherwise partly sunny, 88. Chances for showers diminish as the evening and night wear on. Saturday, we have a 30% chance of some showers and thunderstorms, and right now the window still looks to be mainly between 1 and 4, which is parade time, but it's only about 30%. Still partly sunny on your Saturday with a high of 87, accompanied by a light east-southeast wind. As far as Saturday night, we still hold on to a 20% chance of some showers and storms, patchy, fog, late, mostly cloudy skies. Sunday, a 20% chance of some showers and thunderstorms after 11. Patchy fog to the beginning of Sunday, patchy fog to the end of it, 86, 63 in the middle. And then we'll see chances of showers and storms also start to wind down at least for a few hours on Labor Day, while we had that pesky 30% on Sunday, as far as Labor Day is concerned, we'll have the patchy fog to begin with. We'll see mostly sunny skies and a high of 86. That slight chance of showers and thunderstorms, I think, is on the latter end of your Monday and Labor Day, maybe after 10 or 11 o'clock or so that night. So it should be, albeit a warm one, a dry one, I think, on Monday at this time. As for Tuesday, back to work we'll go, and we'll do so with 86 and 66 for your high and low. We'll start off with a little fog and some mostly sunny skies in the middle. We'll also work back into that 20% chance of some showers, and then that chance of showers builds next week from 20 to 40% as we've got another cool down on its way. Yes, I said we're going to cool down again towards the latter part of next week. I have managed to. I do not do it often. My math was not that good tonight, and I've run a few minutes short. I'll let you out a little early, but make sure you join us back here next time. That's going to do it for us tonight. We'll have the newly crowned Miss Teen McGoffin County on tomorrow night's program. We'll have some other highlights from Heritage Days as well, and then we'll have some news that, of course, you'll only see. I promise you'll only see if you tune in tomorrow night and join us back here then for another edition, the last one this week and before Labor Day of your news today. Thank you, and good night.